Crypto, which is basically first blockchain platform in Singapore to issue the education certificate on blockchain. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, hi, I'm Martin, and I'm also working as a software consultant at Zenica, and uh, I've been in software development for nine years, and uh, also building uh, enterprise apps using web components for more than Yeah. So, uh, today's agenda is uh, we will go through the basics of uh, web components and then we'll talk about the elements of web components and we will build a to do demo using web components. Uh, can we see? And after that, we will build a chat application using Lake Element, which is one of the web component framework. And uh, then we will talk about how we can integrate web components with the existing project, which uses third party library like React, Angular, or Vue.js. Excited? Yeah, I think so. OK. So uh, web components is the set of standards to write modular, reusable, and encapsulated HTML elements. Basically, in today's world, if you are working on the front-end side, uh, so before proceeding, I just want to ask one thing. How many of you have worked on web components? Like, raise your hand. Ever heard of web components? OK. Uh, how many of you are working on the front-end framework? Like, any framework heard of components? Okay, so basically in today, today's world, everything is on the components. Everything is component, which can be reused, encapsulated, and can be modularized for your application. So every, uh, every framework, React, JS, Angular by Google, or anything, they have all introduced components, but the only problem is, like technology is evolving really fast. So if any of you have worked on Angular 1, and when it switched to Angular 2, it was the drastic change. The whole application was broken, and they were written from the scratch again. So you cannot depend on the third party library framework always. For that, uh, web components has been there for since quite a long time. But uh, since quite few years, the support on the browser for, for web components has been drastically moved. And now, most of the latest browser supports the web components. So why they are useful? They are framework agnostic. They don't depend on any framework. And they are written in vanilla JavaScript. You don't need any kind of secondary language for that. So. Why web components? It's basically uh, HTML is not semantic enough to understand. There is no standard templating system. There is no native encapsulation in browser. Basically, you can not uh, encapsulate your styles or your markups so that it don't get overrides by the global or parent CSS. There is no way to reuse the existing HTML. And everything is component, as we talked. So what are the goals of web components? It's basically to reuse our existing code, to encapsulate the styling and markups. It provides the separation of concerns. It provides the better composition. And for theming purpose, it's really best when you want to provide the theme to your application. And it's pretty much expressive because you define your elements by yourself, and it's semantic. Uh, this is the browser support. Basically, if you see, uh, most of the latest browser supports web components, except for the Internet Explorer, which is still uh, developing the support for especially custom elements and shadow DOM. And apart from that, Chrome, Opera, and Safari have pretty much support web components. So, these are the four parts of standard web components, basically templates, imports, shadow DOM, and custom uh, elements. Templates are nothing 
but the usable HTML, which you can define and reuse in your application. Imports it basically uh, introduced in ES6, if you know. Uh, they are basically to import the HTML file in your application. It gives the flexibility so that you can write your web components in .html file and import in another HTML. Shadow DOM, it's basically to encapsulate your markups or CSS. Hello. Yeah. And uh, custom elements, uh, which basically gives you the flexibility to define your own elements. So uh, let's talk about every uh, standard of web components. So custom elements, it basically gives you the flexibility to author your own component. You can name your own component, my cool component, or whatever you want. And you can define your component and tell the parser how you want to parse it in your application. What are the uh, events you want to handle on that event? What are the uh, markups you want to handle on that particular uh, element? So how elements of that particular class will react to some changes. You can pass the props, you can pass the attributes, you can define properties on that particular element. And custom elements always define in a prefix hyphen name. So you will always have a, a hyphen between the custom elements so that it doesn't get messed up with the native HTML elements. Next one is Shadow DOM, which is basically to encapsulate your styling and markups. So whenever you define a Shadow DOM, it's basically attach a DOM subtree to your uh, DOM root. And that DOM subtree is encapsulated and doesn't get overridden by your global scope CSS or markups. It's really great for modularity so that you can just uh, use that modular components anywhere in your application. ES module is nothing but uh, it's for the use and inclusion of the JS documents. In part, uh, it's also, you can use it for HTML and CSS to import in your application. HTML templates, it's basically defined using template tags and uh, it's, <coughs> Good because this HTML template code doesn't, doesn't run by itself until you activate this code. So any kind of image, any kind of script written inside that HTML tag won't get loaded until you will activate this particular code. These are the lifecycle provided with the custom elements. It's basically a constructor is by default with any class you can define. Connected callback is every time uh, you, your components get created and it gets attached to the DOM tree. Similarly, disconnected to uh, clear your memory and clear your deattach your events. Attribute change callback is similarly, whenever you pass a property or attribute to your components, this particular lifecycle method will get called. An adopted callback is nothing when you reuse uh, your custom elements from one DOM elements to another DOM elements. Uh, so here is the sorts definition when you can use the constructor. It's basically uh, whenever your element gets created, your constructor gets executed and it's good for setting up the initial state event listeners, binding the event listeners, and creating the shadow DOM. Uh, connected callback is uh, when your uh, custom elements inserted into the uh, DOM, and it's basically good for fetching data, making a JAX call, and setting the default attributes in your application. And disconnected callback similarly to deattach your event listener or cancel time interval, free up memory of your application. Attribute change callback is called like any time your element observed attribute uh, changes. So there is one, this is static method which is provided in the custom elements, observed attribute, where you can define your variables or observables 
which is going to change in the future. And these attributes can uh, fire this attribute change callback uh, lifecycle method every time. So it has three parameters, name, old value, and new value. Name is basically the name of your attribute which you have defined. Old value is the previous value, and name, new value is the change value of that particular element. Yeah. Adopted callback, as I told you, like uh, whenever you change your DOM or move your DOM to a new document, it get ca called. It's basically useful when you are using iframe in your application. And there is one more method which is available, which is custom elements dot define, which is used to register your elements into the JavaScript. And it uses custom elements registry and it defined using window dot custom elements dot define. You will give the name of your element and provide the class you have created for that particular element. So uh, this is the application we are going to build now. So before that, I'm going to start with uh, one basic example, which is Hello World. And for that, I think everyone is connected with the Wi-Fi, right? So uh, one thing everyone can do, uh, can download HTTP server. Uh, I think uh, one minute. Everyone has NPM with them, right? Installed on their computer, yeah. Just install this uh, HTTP server, which will help us to uh, comp basically uh, run our server, and we will use this to uh, run our website. Place to sit. Yeah. 
So for the new people who had just arrived, uh, we have just gone through the basics of Web Components, its definition, and what are the parts we are going to use to create our Web Component. So we are going to start with the demo of Hello World, which is the basic demo. And we will uh, modify that demo to create a to-do app later on. So. I hope everyone has installed the HTTP server, which I'm going to use to run my server. Yeah. And, uh, I think everyone has installed the HTTP server, right? Yes. Yep. Uh, let's just start with uh, adding one index.html file. And uh, we will add the body tag in it. And uh, if you want, you can add the head tag with it also. Okay. With that, uh, we are going to include our JavaScript file, which we are going to create. So I'm going to give a script tag a source that I'm going to create one file, hello world.js, which will be included here. And this hello world file will define a web component which is hello world, which later on I'm going to use it. OK? This is the very basic HTML file in which I have a body tag. And I'm loading one script. And I'm defining one web component. Let's open a new tab and uh, write a JavaScript file. So we are going to use the self-invoking function. Basically, we don't want to uh, expose our uh, context to uh, outside. So I'm going to use the self-invoking function inside which I'm going to define a function, basically. This is the self-invoking function in our hello world.js. And in with this, I'm going to define a class, hello world. And so every web component, every custom element we define, it extends uh, one uh, class, which is HTML elements. I'm going to extend. I inherit that class. OK, so let me just save these files so that it will look good. I will give it a name index.html. 
and I will save this file as hello world.js. Okay. So first of all, we have defined a class and we have extended the HTML element. HTML elements gives us the flexibility to attach all the native HTML elements properties to our custom defined elements. So now we are going to use the custom elements.define property to define our uh, element. So we will write and we will give it a name, hello world. And we will type the class here. So this line tells JavaScript, okay, this is the hello world tag which has been defined by the user. And it can be used as a hello world in my index.html where I have loaded this. Everyone's okay? Yeah. Now I'm going to define the constructor and I'm going to call the super. Yeah, super is basically to inherit the props from your uh, parent class, which is in our case HTML element. So before that, uh, I'm going to need my uh, template also. So I'm going to define a constant template, and I'm going to create my template here. OK? Now I'll say I'll just uh, put the inner HTML to some uh, the hello and currently I'm just going to put it as a void. Now, I'm going to attach the shadow with the mode open. I will explain this mode later, like why I have used this mode. And uh, I will tell it as like, mm. yeah. Would it be possible to increase the font size a little bit? Okay. Yes. Better? Uh, yes, that's great. I'm going to append this as a child. My template dot content dot. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I am, in this current context, I am attaching the shadow DOM, and in the shadow root, I am appending my template contained 
you, and cloning its content to its shadow root. So now let's try to execute uh, this code. Uh, you can just run your server using npx http hyphen server. And just copy paste it. Let me just open the another window. It's your HTML. Hmm? HTML has Sorry. Okay. Uh, so we have our hello world here. Let's try to modify this hello world code. And I'm going to put a dynamic uh, content here with the hello summit or something. And we will pass this name as a property to our uh, web component. Okay. So, so as we uh, said before, uh, what all the selectors or all the uh, template starting will be here in connected callback. So we are going to define another cycle method, uh, connected callback. And uh, I'm going to say this dot element is equal to this dot shadow root dot query selector. And I'm going to select the strong here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to use the attribute change callback lifecycle method also, which is going to update our uh, inner HTML of the strong. It basically takes three parameters, your name, your old value, and the new value. So I'm just going to do this dot uh, underscore element dot text content is equal to new value. Uh, 
and uh, so when we define a, a variable properties or attribute on a custom elements, we learned before that we have to define a static method which is observed attribute inside which we are going to define the attribute. So we are going to define this method here, static get observed attribute. which basically returns the array of all the observed value. We are going to give this attribute a name on name. And uh, even you can check it here if. You can just call it here. And uh, we are going to pass this name as a property here. Okay. So everyone is following here. I have a question. Yeah. So, um, why do you define the static method again? Ah, this basically defines in your custom elements what are the ele variables are observable in your custom elements. So, which are the observable variables you are going to define in this array? So, any other property if you want to pass like uh, anything, name, surname, or year, date of birth, you can define it here. And whenever you will use this attribute and you define different kind of uh, name here, suppose I'm going to say, so this uh, observed value will call this attribute change callback method. Uh, one right like Hassan. Element so, strong. Which one? Yeah. 
No. Let me just check. This is not, uh, ah. mm. Okay. Okay, that was Let's go there. I think I need to define it here. Okay, uh, so there was one problem. We need to define the element inside the constructor where we are using our query selector. And inside the uh, attribute change callback, we are defining the uh, text content using the new value. And if we will run it, you will see like uh, for different uh, instance of our Hello World component, you will have the different value with it. Uh, and if you'll see the source code for this, you can see the shadow root in your uh, inspect element. And uh, you can see a open written after the shadow, shadow root. This open basically gives you the flexibility to access the reference of your custom shadow root outside the dome. So after this shadow doom if you want to refresh your reference your hello world element support document dot query selector hello world and you want to perform any operation with the open method you can do that as soon as you will make it closed you won't be able to access the reference to the hello world of shadow root outside this particular complex so These are, this is the dynamic method. Uh, next method we are going to try using slots. So uh, everyone is following? Or? OK. Uh, so next method we are going to try using slots. Uh, slots are nothing uh, but a placeholder in your template, which gives you the flexibility to dynamically change the content of your template. So instead of uh, using the uh, uh, strong, I'm going to use the slot. And I will give slot as this name property with which you can reference the slot in your uh, application. So it's basically, I'm going to say, OK, uh, my demo is the name of the slot. And I'm going to comment this. I don't need. So whenever you use slot, you don't need to pass this uh, property. Instead, you define your native HTML elements and it like div and you give it a slot property and inside this you will reference your slot name which is basically my demo and you will pass it what and I'm going to write something Similarly, I'm going to use it here. Uh, another div. And I'm going to write uh, JSConf. Yeah. Let's try. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, in JS, instead of a strong selector, I have used this slot, and I have given it a name, my demo. Then I don't need to use the query selector or anything in my template. This slot will give you the flexibility to add the dynamic elements in your custom elements. Suppose you have defined some uh, UL attribute and you want to have the dynamic L LI attribute inside it. You can define that using slots in your application. So do you have two slots there? Because the second one doesn't have a... Ah, sorry, it's, this, it's just closing. Okay. Sorry. Ah, there is nothing else. All the code is commented. You just directly put this log, that's it. Which one? Yeah. This slot. I am referencing the same slot, but uh, the content is changing between both elements. Uh, this is the same element, but the inside content is different. There is JSConf text. There is some. Yeah, that's same. So, slot is a placeholder in your components, elements, basically, which is dynamic. Uh, it's basically the uh, children of your uh, elements, which is uh, purely dynamic and variable. So this section, which is here, okay, I have defined this slot. I have given it a name to reference it into my HTML, to reference it into my uh, uh, any other HTML or components where I want to use this slot in my template. Okay. Second part. Yeah. The, the, the jazz call is not showing in our laptops. Okay, one. Well, I have only the first one. You have defined this slot. Okay, the village of HTML. Yeah. You have defined the uh, you have defined slots. Hello world closing, the closing of oh, the JS. JS. This is a JS, you have to find slot, my demo. Hello, JS Crown. Where is your browser? I hear you're running this code. Yeah, actually, there's 
just this is a which you are using you have defined this lot here on your element you have to define it into your html element uh, why is the second one is not is not working the code is the same okay no this is going to work one more But also, the business is the secretary and I can just check. Uh, normal. Uh, slot on. You have just need to define this slot here. So, you have defined this slot here. You need to define this slot on your element. Okay. Now it should work. Yeah, I, I, I know this. Uh, okay. Yeah, your your car, you call that Ah. Uh, hmm. Slot my demo. This is wrong. No, no, no. You cannot do that. Okay. Come on. Hmm. Yeah, that's why it's not working. Okay. So, the slot should be on your native HTML elements where you are going to define or which part you want to make the variable and reference it in your templates, basically. So, this part is going to be variable for a placeholder for my custom elements. So I'm going to define this log here and give it the text. So if anyone's uh, code is not working, please make sure that you have defined this log on the native HTML element. Yeah. Everyone is okay? Okay. Okay. So, for the to-do demo, Can you please uh, clone this code on your local system? We are going to use this repository, which is basically for our uh, to-do demo and the next application, uh, check application, we are going to use it. Uh, it has two folders. One is completed code, which you can use it for reference. And one is our demo, which we are going to work on. I'm going to paste it uh, the as a point. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Everyone has cloned this apple. What token? Refresh. See the flash? Yeah. It, it should be right. I need to check it. There should be uh, flickering should be shouldn't be there somehow. I don't know. Uh, if you not fetch it from the it's still flash. Yeah, you will see. Okay. Normally, it doesn't do that. That's the like flexibility of. Uh, web components. It just only changes the text itself so that it won't give you the flicker. Everyone has cloned this repo? Yeah. Wi Fi password is here. Wi Fi password is written here. Password is JSCon Facia. Wi Fi is Lajale JSCon. So, anyone need it, please uh, copy and paste it here. In your code base, there would be two folders. One is the chat demo, and one is the to do MBC. We are going to cover to do MBC right now. Later on, we will check the uh, chat demo, which is basically using the lit element. And uh, for, for your reference, there is a uh, completed code is also written in the demo complete, which you can check out later on if you need the reference. 
Go. So for to do MVC, uh, we have defined three components for our application. One is the parent component, which is to do demo, and then to do list and to do item. Uh, to do list is the uh, wrapper component, which is going to uh, render the, all the to do items inside it. So. Let's start with the to-do demo, which is our first component which we are going to write. Uh, similarly, like Hello World, uh, we have defined the templates here, created a template, and put one inner HTML here. In the inner HTML, I have defined three sections, basically, uh, header, section, and footer. Header is nothing but your uh, input box where we are going to type the to-do demo. Section is the list, uh, which will show you the to-do list. And footer is show you the count of the to-dos which are active right now. So this is our template, which is going to render in our application. Uh, let's, uh, we have defined this to-do demo class. And we are going to uh, define this uh, element first. So let's use window.customElements.define. And I will give it a name to do demo. And I will pass the class here. OK. Now let's go to our constructor. Uh, it says we need to bind these two methods first. So we are going to bind the method this dot new to do key up. And we are going to bind another method also. Now, in our connected callback, we are going to append the host. So before that, uh, we also need to define the uh, We have also defined the disconnected callback, which is basically just to remove the event listeners or unnecessary cleanup on our code. So we are just going to use this dot uh, in our HTML. And we are going to assign it append the term. OK. <laughs> Append child. We are just going to append the content of the template here. Okay. 
Next, we are going to bind some event listeners, which we are going to use. Uh, I'm going to reference them from the complete demo. I don't remember actually. Okay. okay. So we are going to use key up and to do list change event listeners. So key up is basically nothing when we press the enter to our input box, we are going to add the add that to do into our demo and to do list change is nothing but to refresh the count in our application. We are going to remove this listener in our disconnected callback. So I have just copy pasted this uh, listener cleanup from the completed file. So I have uh, added two listeners, key up and to do list change, and removed these listeners in our disconnected callback to clean up it. Apart from that, uh, I'm going to need few query selector to put the operations, to put the event on my to do list. So these are the query selectors, which is basically I'm going to use. And uh, so our to-do list query selector is nothing but the placeholder, which is going to show the list of all the to-dos in our application. And uh, new to do class I have selected to uh, get the attach the event to our uh, input box in our to do demo. Then another main class which is basically nothing but the section class. Uh, the list of to do's we are going to perform some operations there like delete, remove or edit. And the last word not least, to do count, which is basically we are going to show the count of our to do's in our application. Okay. So, let's try to run this code for now and see the UI, like how it looks. If we will run this code, this is how our UI will look. We have put the CSS and everything already there in our HTML file. And if currently I will do anything, uh, it will do nothing for me. Okay, so what we have done till now, till now we have defined a to-do demo custom elements. And inside that element, we have defined our templates for to do demo, which is basically the uh, input box and the list we are going to show and the footer section. Inside that template, we have also introduced one another custom elements a to do list, where we are going to render all our to do's.
inside our connected callback, we have used all the query selector for, to perform the different operations. And we have attached all the events, key up and to do change. And then we did the cleanup in our disconnected callback. And these methods, I'm going to explain it later on. Let's go to our uh, to-do list file. So to-do list, inside to-do list, if you will see, we have created a template elements and give it a slot. So slot is nothing but the uh, variable content inside your template. So here in this section, we are going to define some content, we are going to add some content, which it will be your particular to-do's content or text, which are going to, we are going to show there. So as we saw in our uh, Hello World example, we are going to uh, append templates to our shadow root. So before that, we are going to Uh, attach the shadow with the mode open. And we are going to clone our template. Okay, everyone is following. <laughs> Sorry, uh, before that we also need to define our components actually. In our connected callback, we are going to add one listener to listen for the slot change. Every time the content of the slot will change. And in our disconnected callback, we'll similarly remove the listener. Every time our slot content will change, what we will do, we will remove all the nodes which are unknown to the to-do list elements. So for that, we are going to use the node type element, which is nothing but, uh, uh, we are going to look through all the child nodes and we are going to check for the node type if node type is one, which is basically tells it's a, a native HTML element, and we are going to check its tag name. If it's not a to-do item, we are going to remove it from our list. And then we are going to dispatch the event, basically.
So I'm going to dispatch this custom event to do list change, and with that, I'm going to uh, deliver the to do item element counts, which are basically the all the counts which we I have assigned to my slot here. So this can be accessible through assign nodes to that particular slot. And this slot is nothing but the uh, uh, query selector of this slot, which we have initialized in our uh, constructor. Let's see what it will change. It's an object. Yeah, I have created it an object. Okay. Just check it from here. I don't know. Mm, this dot is when it's dispatching the same. Ah, oh, sorry. It's going to be here. Okay, so this to-do list is going 
give, going to give us the functionality to listen for that to-do change event and update the number of to-dos we have added. So now we need to add the list of to-dos which we are going to show down here. For that, we are going to work on to-do item. So by default, whenever you define a, a template and shadow root, its host element has the styling markup of uh, in line. So by default, it doesn't take the uh, height and width. So it's better for you to uh, define some height and width on your host. So you can either change the styling of your host or put some, uh, and if you don't need the height and width on your uh, host, you can just use the existing styling. So here I'm going to give it uh, some styling from my to-do item. So for my host, I have made it display to block and I did some borders and font size here. We will add the, all the styling later on, just the CSS part. Uh, again, we are going to similarly define the elements first. And uh, similarly, we are going to attach the shadow and uh, clone the template into the shadow root. Apart from that, uh, I have added few uh, methods which are basically checkbox or a different operation on our to-do which we are going to see later. And similarly, I have selected few elements from my to-do list templates. So this is my templates for the to-do. You will see there is an input box label to assign the label for my to-do. Uh, destroy button which is basically to remove the to-do and there would be an edit button to perform the addition on my to-do. Uh, inside connected callback I have just added all the listeners on different uh, uh, for a particular to-do what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to add the uh, edit the to-do, uh, change their text, remove the to-do, and update the to-do. So I have added different kinds of operations, click events and double click, and blur up events. And in the disconnected callback, I just uh, remove all the uh, listeners attached. And uh, in attribute change callback, uh, I'm going to just check for the switch case, which will check for if it's a label or completed, and I'm going to assign the value to it. So it's nothing but uh, this code. So what I'm going to do, if my attribute name is label, I'm just going to make a text contained to the new value. 
and uh, my attribute is completed, I'm going to mark its checkbox as a checked with the this.completed property. Uh, one thing you can also notice, we are going to define these two properties as our observable also. So I'm going to define these here, uh, label and completed, basically. Let's try to run it. Setter and getter for the values. Once we define, uh, I have put some code in Hari, uh, getter and setter code inside it, which is basically used to set or get your observable properties in your custom elements. So I have used two methods, uh, set completed and set label, and similarly get completed and get label, which is basically to uh, set our observable attribute. And these are the different methods which we are going to use uh, to make our uh, to-do list to perform different operations. Uh, basically, we are going to blur the text as soon as you click on the checkbox. And uh, you can click, double click on the to-do list to edit it. And uh, there should be a, a remove button. Check okay. box check completed. Hmm. 
okay uh, so we are missing some css here uh, we are going to i am going to copy paste it from the original elements Yeah, so this is all. This is our to-do list demo using uh, vanilla JavaScript. Uh, next, we are going to look into lit element, uh, which Martin is going to explain. But before that, we are going to take a break for 10 minutes. Yeah. For the second part of our workshop. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we just witnessed how we can able to build web components using just vanilla JS without using any library or using any framework. But uh, for the second part of the workshop, we will be using uh, lit element. So uh, there are already libraries and frameworks that help us to build web components. So uh, libraries such as hybrid polymers, Kate JS, lit element, Element, SlimJS. Uh, these are the libraries that we can use for, for us to be able to build uh, web components a bit faster and easier. So for the frameworks, we also have this custom elements everywhere.com, wherein it lists all the, uh, it shows us the, how compatible the framework is when it comes to the web components. So we can try to take a quick look so for for this one we can see that angular has a good rating J angular js uh, hyper html lit element polymer uh, i think react is somehow uh, a bit low when it comes to web component support but at hopefully in the future uh, they, they will cover most of the features and yeah surplus blue is belty and view so yeah also uh, uh, apart from that i guess uh, frameworks like angular and view also had their own tools for instance for angular they have this angular element for view they have this view web L, uh, web component wrapper if I'm not, I'm not mistaken and also Stencil also is a framework that helps us to build uh, web components. So yeah, we're going to use lit, but what is lit element? So uh, lit element is basically just a base class for creating fast, lightweight web components that work in any web page without any framework. It uses lit HTML properties are observed by default elements update asynchronously when their property change. So uh, we can think of somehow a lit element like an enhancement or an improved version of the HTML element. So uh, lit HTML is the templating library that we were going to use later on. So um, basically lit HTML allows us to uh, def define or write our HTML templates using just plain JavaScript with the use of uh, template literals. So if you notice on my right side, you'll see this is how Preact uh, VDOM re re renders or reruns every time they have an update. While on the left side, this is how lit HTML does its rendering. So if, if we take a look at the H1 element, what happens is the whole node is actually being re-rendered. While in lit HTML, 
only the dynamic text, which are the which uh, those numbers represent, are the only ones who's changing. So uh, thank you for Codeburst for the image, and yeah. So basically, somehow lit HTML is a bit or is slightly faster compared to VDOM. It's like 30 to 40 percent faster depending on your browser. And then the, I think the only uh, slight problem that we have for lit LM HTML is actually during its first render, it's somehow a bit slow. But yeah, I think in the future they will improve that because actually lit HTML, it's not using any VDOM overhead or it's not uh, using any diffing algorithm. It's purely using web standards. So it's leveraging the web standards like uh, it uses the built-in parser, HTML parser of the browser. It uses weak map, uh, tag, template, literal. So uh, for this slide, uh, I want you to somehow focus a bit on the template binding, bindings because this is what we're going to use mostly later on when we're building our chat component. So to do attribute binding, we just simply uh, do, let's say, class attribute, uh, then the data CSS class, nothing that's special, but when it comes to Boolean attribute, we need to use question mark. For property binding, we need to use the period. And for event binding, we need to use the at sign. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, lit element is like an extension of HTML element. So all the life cycle that was mentioned by Sumit earlier can still be used w when building lit element. But apart from that, uh, lit element added some a uh, couple of uh, life cycle, but I won't be able to discuss discuss each one by one because we won't be able to tackle everything for this uh, workshop as we don't have that much of a time. But just to quick uh, to give you a quick overview, um, the lit element update cycle starts when we set a property. So then afterwards, uh, lit element will request an update if there is a change in the property. So by default, it checks whether the all value is equal to or not equal to uh, the new value. So after that, it will do the, the perform update, then should update. Uh, this should update is somehow similar to, I guess, the React lifecycle component should update, wherein uh, by default, this one returns true, but if you want to somehow uh, prevent the component from re-rendering, you can return false on this part. Uh, for the update, uh, no need to override, no need to implement. It's just uh, we. Ha it's just lit element has this um, life cycle in between should update and render, where in in this update the reflection or properties to attributes is happening. And then we have this render. This one we will use this one most of the time. Uh, this is where we define our HTML templates. And the first updated is like uh, this one is once the template has been created, it will call it will be called. But this one only happened once, so any one time work that you need uh, can be implemented here. And then the updated, this is this happens uh, once the, the updated or the element has been rendered. And finally, the update complete. Actually, this update complete is not a method. It's more on a property that resolves into a promise. But this one, we also won't be covering for this workshop. So in lit element, we have 
we we declare properties somehow like this we need to uh, to type in static get properties then return it just an object with the property name then the property options so for the property options mostly we will we'll be using the type reflect and no accessor for, so for the type these are the types the or the the, the default types that we have for uh, lit element is string, object array, boolean, and number. So for the attribute, this is, uh, we're not also going to tackle that, but if you see, uh, if by default, if we do reflect, if, if we mention that reflect is true, then if we change the property to value to something, it will get reflected to an attribute also called as property to. So if we specify an attribute, it's like just whenever prop one has changed, the value will be set to the, or will be reflected to the my dash attribute, uh, ATTR. Uh, so I guess that's it. This are the property options that are available for uh, Lit element. So what we're going to do for today is uh, we're going to build just a simple chat component. So it has four components. So the first one is the chat demo. This is the main component or the entry point component. So this in this one, we will just need to identify whether we should show chat lobby where you can see once we're uh, so at first we, we will display the chat lobby then afterwards once we enter the username we now see the chat room with the chat messages so i think we can now st start so i hope that a while ago that you have already uh, downloaded the repos that was mentioned by Sumit. So if you can go to the inside demo chat folder, you'll find the client folder. So so for, for this one, uh, we have we have five folders. Uh, one is Angular. Re one is for Angular. One is for React. One is for Vue, Server, and Client. So, for the integration, uh, it will be covered by Sumit afterwards. So basically, in these folders, this Angular, React, and Vue folder, we will see how we we can integrate the chat component that we build into these frameworks. So for now, uh, the client component that we're going to build is located in the client folder. I also have server uh, folder. It's just a plain uh, WebSocket server. If you want to try or run, but it's this server is actually not necessary. If you, you can skip it for now. We, but we will be able just we will see just a, a single error when we're, do, we're building. It's like a WS or WebSocket uh, connectivity error, or something like that. But it's okay because it will not crash our application. So uh, running server is like an optional thing. So before we begin, first is we look into the package that JSON. So what I have here is just um, using a force delete element. I'm, I'm also using the OWC dev server, but we can also use Polymer uh, CLI if you want to run your server or any server. But for this um, workshop, I prefer to use uh, OWC dev server. And we just have a roll up for bundling, maybe afterwards, afterwards we will be, we will use this bundling just to somehow integrate the chat component into 
react or view and yeah I only have start and build script so first what we need to do is I guess is we need to npm stall So now let's create a source folder. SRC, then in, in here we'll create, we'll first create the chat message. Uh, by the way, for, for this one, we'll just use uh, plain JavaScript, but you can also use TypeScript if you want. But yeah, for, for this workshop, it's just purely JavaScript. So first thing to do is to import delete element and the HTML and the CSS helpers. So yeah, now let's start creating our class. So let's name this one as um, chat message, which extends instead of HTML, we use lit element. So somehow this is looks familiar because somehow this is similar to what we did earlier when we're building uh, web components using vanilla JS. Also, we need to define, let's call it chat dash message and the ch chat message. So for lit element, the three basic or requirements that we need is, first is we need to define our template. Second is also we need to provide our styles. And yeah, we need to render it. So let's start first by creating a render function. So th we need to, this is where we will uh, write our HTML template. So just to check that this is somehow working, we can just write chat message and then go into the index HTML. Then for, for this one, we'll use um, ES6 module. So type should be uh, module, then source, Let's point it to the chat message. And now we use the chat message. So to run this one, we should just should be able to run it just npm start and yeah, should be good to go. Yeah, so yeah, we were able to create our first component, but of course this is not final yet, but we can somehow see that we already have our chat message working. So what to do next? Um, the next thing to do is uh, we should define our own uh, styles. And 
just simply so for this one you need to use the CSS helper it's similar on what we did for the render and then we put in our style so for, for now let's just see whether we can add background and let's just say that this one display black yeah so we were able to apply our style so as actually we can uh, add our styles here as well we can add these style or external style sheet we can add it here however uh, as per uh, lit element it is highly recommended to use the static get styles instead because uh, somehow what lit element does is it tries to uh, use the constructable style sheet object so if the browser supports the constructable style sheet object uh, somehow what the constructable style sheet uh, object does is it allows us to parse and reuse these style sheets only once so for maximum efficiency um, they're using constructable style sheets as well if only if the virus are supported it so uh, I think one more thing that we need to do of course later on we're going to change the styles and the template so we can also uh, define the properties so first is we need to return an object then let's say uh, I think for the hello world sample if I'm not mistaken we use name as the, uh, the property so we can also do that then for the type it's just string then with the lit element to reflect whenever the property changes we tell lit element to reflect the value to the attribute so to see that happens let's use the property that we define under properties inside the render by the way uh, if we need to somehow initialize or have a default value for our for our properties we should do it in the constructor so let's say the default value for name is equals to hello so if we go check here yeah we see sorry it's not that clear maybe we can change the color to white yeah so now we have the name property the name property default value is hello so there's two things that we can check here is first is since we mentioned that whenever our property changes it should reflect to this attribute so yeah we can try that here let's say we change the name to well yeah we see that this changes as well as the attribute here the attribute name here but what if we 
change this or we remove this one what will happen so what will happen is whenever we change the name property yeah it will not just reflect so if we want for a property to get reflected to the HTML element we just say reflect to so I guess uh, that's the I mean basic to get us started for building this chat message so starting now I might need a bit of a copy paste skill so let's go on to the chat message so for for this one i'll be copying this one first and then for the properties we're going to have two properties one is from and the other one is outgoing so what this is is from is it's uh, more on the name of the server so that we will be able to uh, see in the chat message where the message came from who, who's the sender of the message and outgoing is just a flag for us to identify whether it should be uh, a line right or a line left So I also need to copy all the styles. <coughs> yeah. So I think we now have, or we have now completed the chat message, but just to have a quick idea of what is happening on this render portion so first is whenever the the this or the from property changes we will get the value and if the from is null or undefined or it, it's not set so by default we will have the anonymous as a value then the initial is just like the first we will we'll get the first letter of the name yeah. then for the HTML template first is just the badge wherein we just pass in or bind the initial also we did the same for the name and we were also using slots because for slots we want the content or the yeah the content of the template of our HTML tag to be projected on this portion so if we now try to modify this chat message and we add let's say Martin then say hello yes gone So now we have this um, element. So we can also see how it looks when it is an outgoing. Oops, sorry. 
So basically, if it's outgoing, uh, the direction will be on the right side portion. But if it's not, you should see it on the left side. So if we, since we do re reflect, so we should see outgoing here. So I guess since now we have the chat message, we can now proceed on creating our chat room. So we first create a file, new file. So uh, since we already done the basic stuff, so as much as possible, I want you to create this chat room maybe just the skeleton wherein you add the, or you import the lit element, then you write in the class with a chat through message that extends lit element, then add the static get properties, static get styles, and the render. Also, don't forget to define your uh, element to chat dash room. So yeah, uh, so I hope that you're able to come up with this structure. So first what I'm going to do is, first is we need to have two properties, username and the message list. So we can type it in. String and a message list, which is an array. So for this one, I'll just copy the styles. And I'll just quickly copy the the render. So if one thing that uh, we use in these styles is if you're familiar with uh, CSS variables, the native CSS variables, or let's say the custom CSS properties, we're currently using that here because later on when we try to integrate this one in React or in Vue, we will be able to somehow change the look and feel of our chat component. So for for this one, it's I think it will be somehow 
I, I know I think every I, I assume that everyone have used H uh, I mean tag uh, is familiar with tag template literals or template literals so for for this one we can do the loop here but we need to return the HTML element if not we won't be able to see this one rendered if we're not using the HTML element for uh, displaying the element so if uh, one thing that we need to to see is this one so this we use the boolean attribute binding so if in case you're wondering why we need to use the boolean attribute binding for this one if we change this one to this we might get some error earlier be, uh, in the future because uh, what will happen by default is if this message outgoing is not false or undefined the outgoing value will be undefined string since which is not what we supposed to do that's why we're using the boolean because w if we use the boolean what happens is the value that this outgoing property will receive is just it's pure uh, just true or false not not string boolean So uh, I'll also be copying the rest of the code, I guess. So what what we're doing here is uh, first we define our own custom setter and getter. If if you still remember earlier in the slide, I'm I have mentioned the no accessor. So by default, lit element provides the provides us the accessor so they do implement the setter and getter by default but for this case we did our own um, accessors so we added our own setter and getter so for for this one we actually don't need this request update because the user were we're not using the username for the rendering so we don't want the lit element to re-render whenever the username property change so w one of the things that we need to take note is if we uh, add our own custom accessor we need to trigger the request update manually and pass in the name like what we're doing here earlier you need to pass in the name for this case username and the old value for delete HTML to do its rendering again we need to trigger this when manually when uh, writing our own custom accessors but for this case as I mentioned we don't need this as we don't need lit element to re render whenever the username changes what this does is just whenever we provide him the username it will try to connect to a web socket server and for the one of the lifecycle 
hooks that was mentioned earlier is the first updated. So in here we can have our reference to the uh, input on this case. And also you can also uh, put your, let's say if you're going to do focus on the input after the element has been created for the first time, you can do that on this cycle, life cycle. So I think that's it for the chat room. So if we go on to the index.html and if we replace this to chat room, I hope we should be able to see. Yeah, we're inside the chat room. So one thing I want you to take note of is uh, if you see whenever we add in, oh, I have an error. Oh, okay. We for need also to import the chat room, add the chat message rather because uh, we remove the chat message from this one, from index. And since we need the chat message inside the chat room, we need to import the chat message. So now we should be able, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, we just have this Um, undefined error because we didn't provide a username. I think what we can do is instead of yeah, we need to provide it. Yeah. So yeah, now we have this name and the message and the initial. So if you notice, we have this error, but we can ignore this one as I mentioned earlier. But for this one, I want you to take note of this because what we did is whenever we add a message to the message list, it's like we're getting all the message and concatenating it with the new message. This is because by default, if we do mutation change on our array or object, lit element will not be able to know if something has changed on that object or on this array. So one thing we can do is we can actually try to use push. We can push the new message object instead, but for, re for the lit element to be re-rendered, we need to mention the request update manually. But first, I just comment this one first so that we can see that our app is not working. I mean, we were adding, but it's not re-rendering because as I mentioned, if we do mutate the object or the array, by default, lit will not be able to identify whether change happened in an array or object. So we need to trigger request update manually. So now if we type in, we see the same result. Yeah. So we can keep, the, keep this one for a while. Yeah. 
Jan Kamulas. And now I guess we can start creating the chat lobby. So let's first create a new file and call it chat lobby. So we're just going to do the same thing. Uh, first is we need to import lit element, then the HTML and CSS helpers. Then we create our class. Uh, let's name it chat lobby. And extends lit element. Also, we need to define our element. We call it chat lobby. And we pass in the chat lobby class. Next thing to do is to write the static get properties if we need. But for this case, I think we need, if I remember it correctly. We also need, of course, to provide our styles. And lastly, the render. So for this one, I'm also going to copy and paste. I guess we don't have that much time. Um, yeah, so I need to copy the styles first. Or maybe just copy everything. So what is new here? I guess there's nothing new. It's just we're doing the same. We also have provided our, or exposing our CSS uh, variables for the chat lobby. And then I think the new thing that we're doing here is we're dispatching an event, a custom event, which we did it earlier, I guess, in to-do list app. If you remember correctly, we also dispatched our own custom event. So we just, we also added that here. So this is for us to identify whether the uh, user have entered his name or not, or he, if he already wants to enter the room or not. So we dispatch an event once the room, uh, the, the user clicks on the join room. So for this one, we, we all did as well as we bind the event. As I mentioned earlier, when binding event, we need to use the at, at sign. And then, yeah, there's, yeah, I guess we also did the event binding earlier. So we can, or should, we should now try the event, the chat lobby rather. For the chat lobby, we don't have any properties required. So you should notice we don't have the static get properties. Yeah, and uh, by default, if you remember earlier, we're manually cleaning up all the events that we have added for the to-do list app but in this case uh, lit HTML handles that one for us so we don't need to worry about cleaning up the events that we have here but if of course if we do our or if we add manually our own uh, listener in this one then we should remove that manually but by default if we use the uh, lit HTML event binding, cleaning up the events is being 
taken care of us by uh, lit HTML. So we now have we now added the chat lobby in the index. So yeah, we're now able to see that this is the chat lobby. So I guess finally um, we need to create last component with which is chat demo. So I'll just copy everything. So for this one, uh, there's only a few lines on the chat demo because what this does is it actually just uh, toggles the chat lobby and chat room. But for for this one, yeah, let's try it first. For the chat demo, if you notice, we also imported the chat lobby and chat room. So we only have two uh, properties, the joined and the username. So joined is just uh, an indicator whether the user joined the room or not. And username. So for, for this one, if we can now see if we type in our name and join the room. We were able to yeah, successfully uh, hide the lobby and uh, show the chat room instead. So another thing that we can do here is instead of doing this hidden uh, boolean attribute binding we can also have uh, conditionals inside so let's try that so what we do instead of hidden we remove this hidden or the Yeah, we can. Yeah, we remove. So we remove the uh, boolean attribute binding. So we can then check whether it's not if it if the user is not yet joined, then we show the chat lobby. Otherwise, we show the chat room. So for this one, we also need to return a template result. So yeah, so we were just doing some ternary here, so we're checking if the user has joined or not. If the user is not yet entered the room, so we sh will display the chat lobby. Otherwise, we'll show chat room. Yeah. Quick question on this one. Yes. Also, just be a conditional in the render method itself. Sorry. Yeah. Could this also be a conditional just in the render method itself? Like if joins then render this HTML. Yeah. Join. <coughs> Sorry. Sure why you put the conditional Inside another HTML, couldn't this just be a conditional in the render method? Like if this join then render this HTML, if not join then render the other. Sorry, I don't. If you move this, this join conditional up into the render method itself. Oh. Okay. We can try. Uh, 
haven't tried it actually mostly I but I think it will still work so it's like this one right yeah both will work I believe so let's return This right. Yeah. Yeah. It's still the same. But just to make sure that we have second part should be in those calls. Sorry? Just to make sure that this has changed. Let's try to add a fake uh, attribute or say class, fake class. So if we enter, yeah. So any approach is will work. But I think, yeah, this one is a bit cleaner. Yeah, so I guess that's it for the uh, chat demo. For the integration of the chat demo, it will be done by Sumit. Uh, so for the last part, uh, we are going to use uh, web components to basically see how we can integrate them with our existing projects, uh, which we have already written in third party frameworks. So uh, do you guys need a break before that? OK, so we can have a 10 minutes break, and then we can see how we can integrate it in our existing projects. with any third party library framework. So I'm going to show you how we can integrate it with React. And there are similar steps which you can follow with uh, mostly Angular or Vue.js or any other third party library. Uh, so uh, there is uh, polyfill you will need to install if you want your application to support for all the browsers, especially for Internet Explorer. And there is one polyfill available web component js which you can always install to support it apart from that there is vendor copy which is available for uh, react js to copy all the vendor files into your own repository so in your packet.json you can write a post install script which is basically will whenever you do npm install this post script uh, post install will get executed and it will execute a vendor copy script which basically what that takes the uh, custom elements ES5 adapter and polyfill which is uh, web components bundle.js and copy it into your public folder so that uh, later on we can utilize this uh, in our index.html and in your index.html you need to add the three files, uh, three lines. Basically, you are including the uh, same copied file in your index.html. That's it. That's how you can support it in your uh, React or any existing application uh, where you want to integrate the web components. So if you'll see, we have like one of the, uh, we have uh, put all the code for Angular, React, and Vue into the repository. If you want to look at it, look at them. Uh, apart from that, if you will see here in the code base, uh, 
so in my packet dot json i have ended, added my vendor copy script which will do the uh, copy of all the web component po polyfill and es5 adapter for me and i have written this into a post install script so whenever i'll do npm install it will get executed and in my app dot js i will just if i am writing my web components in this folder directory structure i can directly import it here uh, for this i have created that as a package and i have installed that package and i am importing from that package chat demo and i am using that directly as a component inside my app dot js and if you will run this uh, it will be similar as we saw previously and we can just execute this and use this command so it's really simple to use web component in your legacy project or any existing project you can plug it in any time you know any kind of project and similarly it's really simple to integrate with view uh, for angular it's a bit complicated but uh, we have provided some reference for them and uh, you can always go through those links and check that uh, there are some pre best practices while you are working on web components uh, always create a shadow root whenever you want to encapsulate your styles create your shadow root in the constructor always place any children the element creates into the shadow root so that it should be inside your dom elements set a dollar host display style by default it's in line means it doesn't take the height and width so it's better to set it to block or in line block or flex uh, it's always uh, better to set the display property for the hidden hidden attribute on the host it's basically uh, you will never be able to assign the none property to a host element do not override author set or global attributes the default property which are uh, used in a native element do not try to override them in your custom elements always accept primitive data as either attributes or pro uh, property so whenever you are passing the data or passing some kind of uh, uh, booleans numbers or string try to pass them as a property as we saw like name in our hello world example do not dispatch event any time from a host to downwards to your children always pass them as a property or attribute uh, dispatch events from your children to your parents so as we saw we saw to do change or other events which we pass from our children i uh, don't forget it basically tells us like what you should always keep in mind when developing any uh, custom element uh, accessibility of your elements it should like be accessible using the role attribute if it's taking all the area attribute if it can define you should always put the accessibility of your uh, custom elements performance try to not use much of debounce or any other performance lagging uh, method which can impact the performance of your element a script isn't always the answer if there is sometimes like you can uh, use the native html only don't always go with the uh, web components custom elements be responsive try to define your components in a responsive manner and always test your uh, components as much as possible these are the references we went through to collect all the content and if you want to go through it especially the last three which are used for to integrate your web component with angular view and react these are really useful when you are trying to uh, set it into a project uh, that's it that was the workshop and if you have any questions you can ask any time